In my office with its brick wall view, my eyes bloodshot and sore from the fluorescent light. Request after request pings in, a flash in the corner of the glaring screen begging for my attention, letting me know every time somebody needs something from me. With each polite, not unreasonable request, the tide of anxiety rises. These people need me. I'm the only person who can help. The lump in my throat worsened, as if I'd beaten a piece of bread too fast and it got stuck. I stand up, glass in hand, and wearily walk to the kitchen next door for some water. Suddenly, from nowhere, a question pops into my head. Louise, why are you always rushing to get everything done? In that moment, the fog lifts. The clouds that had been endlessly gathering above my head part, and just for a moment I can see the sky. I realise suddenly, from nowhere, the futility of all the pushing and rushing and fighting to keep up. What did I think was going to happen? That someone would lean over and say, well done Louise, you did everything. That's it. You can rest now. I realise in that fleeting moment that there would never be an end point. No point at which things would feel totally under control. No point at which I could declare finished and relax. After years of feeling my way blindly through the fog, this moment of absolute clarity jolts me awake. I needed to choose. Stay on the hamster wheel, appreciated, praised, rewarded, exhausted, stressed, medicated, or find a way to get off. In the 15 paces from my office to the kitchen, I make my choice. It's a cold December morning and I'm cocooned in a whitewashed cottage at the end of Northumberland Beach that stretches to the ruins of the castle in the distance and beyond. It's been a week since our wedding and I've got the flu. I feel like an old rag, completely wrung out, running on empty. But this sanctuary with its open fire and squishy sofas is working its magic. I get up early, make myself a green tea and curl up under a blanket um, in the cosy armchair by the window. I sit and watch the sunrise as I sip the hot tea, the waves crashing onto the empty beach. In the peace of this moment, I finally have space to think. The pushing and rushing and fighting to keep up has been dragging me down into the depth for too long. It needs to stop. I need a life jacket. So in my cosy, silent corner, I pick up my phone and I ask, how do I slow down? And just like that, a whole new world appears before me, a world I didn't even know existed. Curled up in my armchair, I hungrily devour article after article, feeding my soul with nourishment and hope as the waves continue to crash on the beach. I feel such an intense wave of relief and a lightness of spirit. I found it. There is another way. I am saved. Imagine a world where our value and our self-worth is not based on how much we get done, where there's no pushing and rushing and fighting to keep up. Imagine a world where it's okay to slow down, to be present, to experience and savour every moment, where choices are made from a place of alignment, connection and intention. A world of fairness, kindness and compassion, where people feel nourished and supported to show up as themselves without fear of judgment or shame. That's the world that I want to live in. And to be honest, I did wrestle with that for a while. Where did my logical, organised brain and gift for getting things done efficiently fit into my vision for a world where productivity isn't the be all and end all? And then, as my eyes adjusted to the wide open sky, things came into focus. What if being productive wasn't about cramming in more and more doing? What if it was about creating space? And that's why I've made it my mission to bring compassionate, sustainable productivity to conscious business owners who are feeling overwhelmed by all that they want to do. I'm harnessing my productivity superpowers and using them for good so that together we can build a more sustainable world where joy is more important than stuff and where being is more important than doing. What might be possible for you in that world?